In January, The Lancet published a very interesting paper which received much attention from the British press. Food in the Anthropocene, the Eat Lancet Commission on Healthy Diets from Sustainable Food Systems. This was a very interesting read and I want to share some of the information with you. Firstly, what is the Eat Lancet Commission? EAT is an independent, non-profit organisation based in Oslo, Norway. The Lancet is a well-respected medical journal, and just in case you have not figured it out, the Anthropocene is our current geological age, and rather depressingly, is defined as the period during which human activity has been the dominant influence of climate and the environment. EAT gathered 37 scientists from 16 countries and their aim was to define targets for both a healthy diet and a sustainable food system. It is a sad fact that by 2050 our planet will need to feed 10 billion people and at the moment the diet that we eat is not sustainable and is threatening both people and our planet. The population reached 7.7 .7 billion this February. During the 20th century, the population in the world has grown from 1.65 billion to 6 billion, and in 1970, there was roughly half as many people in the world as there are now. However, due to declining growth rates, it will now take over 200 years to double again. But the fact remains that there are many mouths to feed, and at the moment, we are not doing a very good job of it. The World Health Organization states that malnutrition refers to deficiencies, excesses or imbalances in a person's intake of energy and or nutrients. It covers two main conditions. One is undernutrition, the other obesity and diet related non-communicable diseases such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes and cancer. Around 1.9 billion adults worldwide are overweight while 462 million are underweight. An estimated 41 million children under the age of five years are overweight or obese. According to estimates from Public Health England, two thirds of adults and a quarter of children between two and 10 years old are overweight or obese. By 2034, 70% of adults are expected to be overweight or obese. This is putting a huge strain on the NHS and estimates suggest that obesity cost the NHS 6.1 billion in 2014 and 2015. In parts of the world such as Haiti, there is devastating malnutrition. It is estimated that as much as 75% of Haiti's population lives in poverty. Because of this, much of Haiti is severely malnourished. According to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, about 3.8 million Haitians don't get enough to eat. One in three children are stunted, while 100,000 children suffer from acute malnutrition. One third of Haitian women and children suffer from anemia. Haiti thus has the lowest food availability currently measured in the world of only 1,976 calories per person per day. Two out of three Haitians are believed to survive on a meagre sum of $2 or less per day. Though agriculture forms a significant sector of the country's economy, 80% of the staple food, rice, must be imported from other countries due to the extremely poor yields of Haitian agricultural sector. This is due to poor irrigation, with only 10% of agricultural lands being irrigated and so Haiti's agricultural system is almost completely dependent upon rain. Haiti's plight is an example of what is happening to many places around the world. Many families around the world cannot afford or access enough nutrients like fresh fruit, and vegetables, legumes, meat and milk. While foods and drinks high in fat and sugar and salt are cheaper and more readily available, leading to a rapid rise in the number of children and adults who are overweight and obese in poor as well as rich countries. It is quite common to find undernutrition and overweight within the same community, household or even individual. For example, it is possible to be both overweight and micronutrient deficient. But as it stands, the global food system cannot meet the nutritional demands of a growing population projected to increase to 10 billion people by 2050 without irreversibly damaging the planet. Let us turn to what the planetary health diet actually is. It is a diet for people over the age of two 
and who do not have additional nutritional requirements such as pregnant women. It recommends half a plate of fruits, vegetables and nuts. The other half consists of primarily whole grains, plant proteins such as beans, lentils and pulses, unsaturated plant oils, modest amounts of meat and dairy and some added sugars and starchy vegetables. To achieve this there needs to be a doubling in eating foods such as fruit, vegetables, legumes and nuts and a 50% reduction in global consumption of less healthy foods such as added sugars and red meat. This global reduction would be achieved by wealthier countries consuming less sugar and red meat. It also has to recognise that some populations are not able to get adequate micronutrients from plant-based foods alone. So a diet rich in plant-based foods and fewer animal sourced foods can result in a reduction in undernutrition, overnutrition and diet related non-communicable diseases which are continuously on the rise globally. These non-communicable diseases such as heart disease and type 2 diabetes are putting a huge strain on our NHS and it would benefit from dealing with fewer numbers of these diseases. Global uptake of the planetary health diet can reduce approximately 11 million premature adult deaths annually, effectively contributing to a 19 to 23% overall reduction in premature mortalities per year. In addition, the report also identifies environmental limits for sustainable food systems. The Commission focused on six main systems and processes that are affected by food production. These include climate change, fresh water use, contamination of water by nitrogen and phosphorus, and the loss of biodiversity. Achieving a sustainable food system is challenging, but not impossible, and the Commission outlines three main actions that need to be taken which are a global shift towards healthy diets, improved food production practices, and reduced food loss and waste. But even a small increase in the consumption of red meat or dairy foods would mean that a sustainable food system is unattainable. Food production has a huge impact on carbon emissions, and to meet the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, which is for world carbon emissions to be halved by 2030 and net zero carbon emissions by 2050, three important contributions from agriculture are needed. These are halting land expansion into carbon rich ecosystems, reducing methane and nitrogen dioxide emissions from agriculture, notably rice production and enteric fermentation from livestock, and increased carbon storage in agricultural lands through improved cropland, pasture and rangeland management practices. This, along with the reduction of fossil fuel emissions, is the only way to meet the Paris Agreement. The Commission has five strategies to meet the aims of a healthy global diet. Strategy one is to seek international and national commitment to shift towards healthy diets. To do this, education is needed, but also healthy foods need to be more accessible and affordable. Strategy two is to reorient agricultural priorities from producing high quantities of food to producing healthy food. The idea here is that not only must agriculture and fisheries produce enough calories for a growing global population, but agricultural and marine policies reflect the need for a variety of nutritious foods that enhance biodiversity rather than increasing the volume of a few crops, much of which is used in animal feed. Strategy three is sustainably intensify food production to increase high quality output. So basically this means that there needs to be at least a 75% reduction in yield gaps on current croplands. A yield gap is the difference between the crop yield that is achieved and the crop yield that could be achieved under more intensive management. This is a very complex task and needs to be achieved whilst also striving for global food system which is a net carbon sink from 2040 onwards. Strategy four is a strong and coordinated governance of land and oceans. The hope here is that there is zero expansion of new agricultural land, that there are management policies for restoring and reforesting degraded land. There is also a need to improve the management of the world's oceans so that fish stocks are utilized responsibly. Strategy five is to at least half food losses and waste in line with United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. 
Food losses at the production side and food waste at the consumption side need to be reduced by 50%. It is difficult for any of us to personally implement all of the strategies mentioned to achieve a healthy diet from sustainable food systems. Policies need to be developed, which is beyond what we can do as individuals or as a family. However, we can reduce the amount of food waste that we produce and ends up in our bins, and we can certainly change our diets. So should we all become vegetarian to save the planet or even vegan? For our own health, then we should certainly be eating a more plant-based diet and less red meat and dairy. Having less cows on the planet would certainly cut down on the amount of methane produced. And rice could be produced in a way which reduces methane emissions. I'm not going to go into detail here as I'm going to discuss these in another video on climate change. Even before I started writing this, I decided to make changes to my diet and that of my family. It started by substituting mycoprotein for animal protein, and then I decided to try a dairy-free diet. Only I wanted to go to a dairy-free diet, and I love drinking the milk alternatives and eating the plant-based yogurts. The types of cheese are a bit limited, but I have found a very nice Greek-style cheese and a soft cheese spread, which is lovely. I have discovered tofu and it is amazingly versatile and can be cooked to make quite a delicious meal. I have not given up meat and still eat chicken and fish once a week. This I have discovered is called being a flexitarian. So you don't have to become a vegetarian or a vegan to eat a healthier diet or to save our planet. Just cut down on your red meat and dairy consumption. This is a PS to you all. You may have noticed some strange noises towards the end of the video. I hadn't realised that the microphone was so sensitive and it has picked up Elsa, our cat, snoring.